What is good? We're back with our first post-combine rookie mock. Got to get right to it for your pleasure. Our guy Jason turned around that combine reaction show in a night and going to try to turn this one around. So boys probably sleepy, but normally sleepy anyway. So shout out to him. Austin, back in the house. Good to see you, man. It's been a minute, but here we are. We're ready to crank, crank some episodes out. Yeah, man. Ready to roll, man. I'm happy to be back. It's been a minute, man. I was in Fort Lauderdale. I was in Vermont snowboarding. Jet you know, Just visiting some college buddies. Yeah. Just just getting after it, man. Just having a good time. So, it, But it is good to be back here, man. We just had the NFL Combine, and what a weekend it was, man. It was, it was awesome for content purposes. I think if you have a 2024 first, man, you're pretty happy. I think mm -hmm. stock up for the most mm -hmm. part. Would you agree, Casey? Oh, yeah. That's what I let off the combine reaction show with was you know the biggest winner was you you out there um so i i agree yeah stock up on some on some values of your draft picks uh, i have to feel like overall pretty good showing for everybody no, nobody got really terribly scared off outside of a few guys but i'm sure we'll talk a little bit about them uh in this draft so you ready to roll yeah, man, I'm ready. I got a, I got a lot of guys I want to talk about today. So uh, this, uh, we just finished this mock. This will be a lot of fun. Yeah. So this is a super flex tight end premium 1.5, uh, three round rookie mock. Um, we did it with the patrons. Um, so I'm gonna read off six at a time, and we'll kind of talk about it six at a time. Kind of talk about it. So um, let's get into it. All right. So right off the rip. 1-1, one, one, Caleb Williams, 1-2, <laughs> Marvin Harrison, 1-3, Jaden Daniel, 1-4, Drake May, 1-5, Malik Neighbors, and 1-6, Roma Dunze. Uh, that's pretty right on the on the on the nose with the six guys. You can you know kind of vary them around your your thoughts there. I know you're probably swapping neighbors for Daniels or May, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know me pretty. You know me pretty well, Casey. Um, you know, I, I still to this day, I still have Marvin Harrison Jr. as my one hundred and one. I'm perfectly fine with Caleb at the one hundred and one. Never gonna, not gonna argue, not gonna complain about that. Um, I actually recently updated my dynasty Ooh. rookie rankings. I just put them up on Twitter, like. 10 minutes ago we're, we're recording this at like nine o'clock at night my time so um just uh just want to state that i actually switched drake may to my qb2 i have Jaden daniels now at my qb3 it was always close i feel like drake may is going to have a more successful nfl career and more successful fantasy career when it's all said and done right i get Jaden daniels upside i get it i like Jaden daniels just want to throw that out there that Drake May is now my QB2. I saw him go as the QB3, and uh, I don't even, like, I don't necessarily have a problem with this. I think it, they're still in the same tier. I uh, just, just wanted to let y'all know I, I did update my rankings. And, uh, yeah, man, Malik Neighbors here at the 105 feels like a value. I'll tell you what, landing Roma Dunze, who I am still infatuated with, right? That's, not, that's never going to change. He's still my wide receiver sure. three. Love Brian Thomas Jr. Love that uh, we saw him get stock up, just improve his, his draft cap, improve everything, make a little bit more money. But Roma Dunze is still my wide receiver three. And for him to go here at the 106, man, I'm not saying it's a value, right? Because I think this is kind of where he belongs, but it does feel like a value. Would you agree, Casey? Yeah, no, I mean, this is, I, I, I tend to agree. I I was Rome over neighbors for a lot of this process. I can give them uh, neck and neck status at this point. I, I got to concede that neighbors is right there, uh, but I, I love Rome, the one six here. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're so you're you're so good such in good shape from one six to one seven all the way down there i don't think you can really um fuck it up too bad but yeah rome at one six it's yeah it's a value but it's kind of how that's basically how it's gonna go you might even get him at one seven so yeah oh yeah uh, but so you would have you would have taken neighbors at one three and then yeah May i uh, at one i four, can daniels at one five or a dunze over any of those quarterbacks I got uh, Malik Neighbors at the 103 still. I have not moved. I refuse to. I I, I refuse to change Malik to uh, the 104, 105 range, man. He's, he is locked in at 103 for me. Drake May comes in at 104 in my rankings. I actually have Rome at 105 just in front of Jaden Daniels. It might be a little rich for some people. That's how much I like Rome. It's not even a knock on Jaden Daniels. I just like Rome that much. Again, Jaden Daniels at 106. And then I have 107. Not to get too far into my rankings, but 107 is where I have Brock Bowers. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's, you know, fairly standard. I, I'm, I'm okay with you chopping up really that, that first seven, however you kind of see fit. Um, I, I, I do like seeing maybe the quarterbacks go one, three and one, four. I like both of them. I can get down with, with may over Jaden Daniels as well. Uh, I like may's got some, some pretty solid rushing upside himself. It's nowhere near where Jaden Daniels is, but it can't be discredited. Um, I think I've watched some Daniels tape and I've seen him miss stuff just like I've seen may miss stuff. Uh, I just happen to prefer may a little bit over, over Daniels. Uh, I will say that quarterback is the time of, I spend the least amount of time evaluating that position. Um, I just find that it's, it's not super useful to me because I'm not, I don't know exactly what I'm looking at with the quarterbacks, but I, I've, you know, so uh, I'm I'm taking Drake May over Jaden Daniels. Fantasy wise, I could see how Jaden Daniels could be great. I'll take Rome and and neighbors interchangeably. Uh, that's fine with me. And then Brock Bowers probably the last pick in tight end premium uh, mm-hmm. for me as well. So we can expand this to one seven through one twelve. We got Brock Bowers. We got Brian Thomas. We got Xavier Worthy. We got Lad McConkey, uh, JJ McCarthy, and Troy Franklin. So as you pointed out. Uh, Brian Thomas had a excellent showing at the combine definitely locked up the fact that he's going to be a first round pick. I know that that probably wasn't breaking news, but that really, really helped it out that, that he was uh, that fast and, and looked very, very solid um, in like the gauntlet and such uh, in, in the drills portion. Then Xavier worthy. And then I had that pick at, at 10. I took Lad McConkey. I, 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 I'm, I when we had Snoog on and we talked about it, uh, I said I I could see Lad ending up kind of in that mix, and I'm I'm right there, man. Like Troy Franklin has has dropped down to to the 112, where he was probably the fight for the 108, 109 in a lot of these. Um, I think what you saw was McConkey be damn near just testing as fast as Troy Franklin and is a lights out better route runner uh, and kind of understanding of what's going on in the field and how to operate, in my opinion, uh, f- for Lad. So I, I can't not have him up here at this point. Like the test was out, outstanding. Everything else on the field is really good. The only thing you worry about is some some injuries, but and that could kind of happen to anybody. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really terrible. It's not like he tore each Achilles and you're worried about that. You know, he did miss some time, but man when he's out there he is he is a technician so i got lad up there how what do you say about this back six here so uh i'll start out with uh the seventh pick in this draft which was uh brock bowers i think i i think this is the right choice here man i i think brock bowers is starting to feel a little bit like a value um i think 107 is is you know, if you want to reach it and take him at 106, I'm okay with it. But at 107, man, I, I feel if you're walking away with Brock Bowers at the 107, like you got to be happy. You have to be very happy with this value. 108, so Brian Thomas Jr., I want to talk about him for a minute, sure. man. He scored a 9.97 out of 10 on his Ross score. That is 10th out of 3,063 career wide receivers from. 1987 to 2024 just for context right and look man if you do well at the nfl combine good for you it's probably beneficial for your bank account more than anything because your draft capital right they go hand in hand with one another i'm not saying that you know having a good ross score is going to lead to success in the nfl i'm just saying it's good for your bank account and it's never a bad thing when you thrive at the combine so good for brian thomas jr man for his 40 time was a 433 crazy because when you think about like devon achan running to four three two and you're telling me he's neck and neck with him and he's just got so much more weight and height and uh his vertical 38 and a half inches and, and just a quick reminder about brian thomas jr man 17 touchdowns he led the nation he led yeah. all college football he was first 68 receptions 1177 yards six foot three 209 pounds he came in a little bit shorter than we anticipated. That's perfectly fine, man. Six foot three is still a great height for Brian Thomas Jr. Um, I guess the final thing I'll say about him, man, is is <laughs> he's going to go even earlier in the first round of the NFL draft and your dynasty rookie drafts than I anticipated. Like, man, he might be going 15 overall to the Colts. I was kind of thinking like 
20th overall, like 22nd yeah, range. Yeah, and, I agree. I, that's what I, when I said, you know, he's kind of more locked it in now. It's, it's, you thought that he could be in the 20s through 30s, but it wasn't a yeah. 100%, 100%. And now I think it's, I think you're, like you're saying right there, I think he could be yeah. anywhere off the board uh, and it wouldn't be a shocker. It, it could be 15 to the Colts. I think the Jags of the 17th pick. I mean, I'm, that is the range that I see Brian Thomas Jr. going in the NFL draft. So, uh, But we'll move on. Xavier Worthy, man, 4-2-1. Just insane. I mean... I think we Casey, we were talking about him running like a four two nine. He was projected like low four threes, high four twos. Yeah. And for him to break the record, I mean, holy cow. Um, yeah. it was it was discouraging to see him come in from allegedly six one. He ended up being five eleven, 165 pounds. That was discouraging. It's okay, right? That's not the end of the world. That and we always Casey, we always knew what his game was. We yeah. always knew what his bread and butter was. So um this was just, you know, simply um, reaffirming what we already knew, right? It, it was simply us saying like, okay, we, we knew that he was fast, but oh my God, he's even faster than yeah. we thought. We so, knew he was um, skinny and fast. It really doesn't, that nothing, none of that changed outside of the fact that he, he did run really, really fast. Um, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. the fact that he um, is, isn't, isn't six foot, I don't care at all. That's not, wasn't right. That's, that changes nothing about what his game is, um, you know, so. Right. And uh, Casey, I need you to talk me into Ladd McConkey, man, because I am considerably I, I am notably lower on him than consensus. And man, th there is a lot that I do like about Ladd McConkey, but I just I want you to yap about him for a, for a minute or two, man. Just sell me on him. Get me up to speed with him. Right. Well, you know, it's it's, it's a lot of kind of what I said to start this off with. Um, I just. So basically right here, I could have picked I could have picked JJ McCarthy. That's that's most likely gonna be the pick here that you want to take, maybe even one or two higher. Maybe he ends up being after Brock Bowers. If he gets top five, top ten, top fifteen capital, it, it's likely that he's going to move up. And that was probably the pick I should have taken there. He's not my personal favorite quarterback. I think he's fine. I think he's got a lot of traits. I think he had, you know, a really good team around him and and a really good head coach, not taking anything away from him. We didn't see a ton. The stuff that we did see, pretty solid. Mm -hmm. There's some there's some really good numbers that back up uh, some of the third down stuff and all that. So JJ should have probably been the guy to take here. That that would have been the value. He probably has the best trade value. Yada yada yada. Um, but I really just wanted to take Lad to just cement it to put him up here on this podium because this is where I I think he belongs. Like Troy Franklin was up here, and we know Troy Franklin's really fast, right? Um, so that would have been that would have been the next guy that we were talking about all all before the combine, right? And and I don't think really anything necessarily happened to not have Franklin in this race. I think we just had some other guys kind of get up to speed with him. Um, and so their forties are fairly identical, and and we just so we weren't sure what the vertical speed of Lad McConkey was when we kind of talked about it. Although when me and Snoop talked about it, both of us said probably a better vertical threat than he gets credit for. And now it's just that's kind of proving out right there with at least some speed or confirmation bias, as we talked about a lot from the combine. That's what it's going to give you. It's going to you're going to get a lot of confirmation bias. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and, if, and I like Lad coming in, so maybe that's some of that right here. But basically, it comes down to. If they're fairly equal in speed, which I think Franklin's faster on field speed than he did than he ran in the 40 there. I think he's even faster, which even what he ran was really good, but I think he's a little faster than that. Um, but then when you when you get to all of the other things, if Lad's at least close to as fast as he is in a straight line, like his route running ability and techniques are far superior to what Troy Franklin is putting out on tape, in my opinion. Um, and I don't I don't think Lad just has to be solely in the slot either he played a lot of outside already and i think he can play outside you know you'd be in today's game there's not that many guys especially with the frames that were coming in and how they're working like yeah you get that yeah, do you want, how much do you want to move brian thomas around probably maybe maybe not a ton we'll see how what what fits his skill set but lad you'd be silly not to move that guy around you'd be silly not to move xavier worthy around like yeah you can put him outside a little bit here and there but you should definitely have him in the slot and in motion so that's really what it comes down to for me. I, I feel like the the nuts and bolts of Lad McConkey's game is very very tight. He's a he's a technician. There's there's not too many routes uh, that I don't think he can run. There's not too much I don't think he can do. And and then the testing was was really really solid for him. So I'm um, I'm throwing him in there and throwing my guy a bone here. 
Right. And it felt like stock up for Ladd McConkey sure, after, sure. right? Of course, after his NFL combine performance. We got JJ McCarthy here at the 111. So in my rankings, I have him at the 204. Um, man, here's what I'll say about JJ McCarthy. I get that, it, that, that we're doing a super flex dynasty rookie draft. I get it. Um, maybe it's just me being a little arrogant. Um, I'm just going to simply fade him regardless of you know position position value i i can't get on board with this man i can't take him here at the 111 personally i just can't do it i don't think that he's quite good enough to be even in the same tier with some of these guys and i can understand the logic of you know people may think i'm foolish here i get it um i just i just don't agree with jj mccarthy being here man i'm i'm again i'm this is another guy maybe notably lower on and it's okay he's someone i'm okay with missing on i just i cannot get behind it like i landed i had the 12th pick in this draft the very next pick i drafted troy franklin here and i 100% I'm taking Troy Franklin over J.J. McCarthy personally, right? Um, Probably there's a few other guys like Trey Benson who goes at the 201, man. I'm I'm going to take him. Seriously, I, I, I'm right there. Like, I, I have Trey, Trey Benson at the uh, 110 in my rankings, and I have uh, J.J. McCarthy at the 204. I just, I can't get behind McCarthy. Yeah. And, and a few of these quarterbacks, I, I don't think they're going to thrive in the NFL. And uh, it's, it, again, it's this is just my opinion. My rankings are going to change, man. Like, this this is not set in stone. I still have more research to do. The combine was great. It was beneficial. But um, this is a long process, man. We still have the NFL draft. We have a lot more. So my rankings are going to adjust. Consensus rankings are going to adjust. But um, it's, it's great to see, you know, just all these different opinions, all these different thought processes. It makes it fun for me, man. Yeah, it makes it a lot sure. of fun. That's that's what this is all about. If everybody had the same rankings and opinions and fields, we'd never get anything done. It would just be a sterile ass. Everybody had all the answers. You know, everybody's trying to find that cheat sheet with with whether right. it's something on film or something, some stats from the combine and some, you know, some analytical st- data and metrics and stuff like that. And there are some things that can help qualify you for things to have a better chance. But I don't I don't know that there's any one cheat sheet that says, hey, this is this is absolutely uh, how this goes. Cause I don't think anybody, if once they figure that out, it's probably not gonna be all that much fun. So, I mean, I guess really at the end of the day, if you have hate in your heart, let it out, just let it out, buddy. Um, but I feel you. I, I kind of said the same thing about McCarthy in a different way of like, he's just not, I don't love him. I, I'm, I'm that lower on consensus, but the idea being it, you're, you probably should draft him here because he, to, nine or seven or eight of other people in your league the quarterback position's pretty scarce especially qb2 qb3 and some people love this guy a lot of people and the hype is building so that's those are all positive things Mm -hmm. for his value so i'm not scared to necessarily take him i don't know that i'm going to move forward with him uh but the value i think will be really good he's he's i think he's probably more valuable than at least lad mcconkley at this point and and probably franklin as well and and gets that draft capital in the top 15 18 then wheels up for value all day long so um and that's you know always part of the equation you got to know that as well that hey this is knowing what the consensus is and where the value is and knowing where your rankings are 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 very good things to both have a really good understanding about because really at the end of the day we're just trying to play the value market of this whole thing or at least i shouldn't say everybody but most people are looking to play the value market and it, it mm-hmm. just leaves you in a good position to be able to be um liquid and kind of move around a little bit but you got to be willing to be a wheeler and a dealer to get into that if not then just don't draft them because you don't want to deal with the trading understandable um so let's keep it moving you got anything else to add before we uh, move on here no man start us off with the uh, 201 right all right yeah 201 we got benson uh, A.D. Mitchell, another big, really helped this stock out here. Marshawn Lloyd, Jonathan Brooks, Bo Nix, Keon Coleman. Those are your next six off the board. You started hitting on a little bit on Trey Benson. This is where we're going to get the big run of running backs in the combine. I think we had Bucky Irving and Estime get, get a little stung. But I, other than that, we had Wright rise up, right? Uh, we had the, the Louisville guy whose name's escaping me. It's, it's somewhere on here. Uh, Garrido, I believe that's right. how you say it. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he's, he's now going to bounce up and, and potentially if he gets draft capital, like he's, he's going to be a buzz. He gets draft capital. He's for sure going top of the second round um, where, where the rest of these running backs are going. So running back kind of balanced out. I felt like Corum didn't really hurt his stock a ton, did, but he didn't do anything crazy. So running backs stay 
pretty neutral here. And if you want some, this is where you're going to come to get it in the second round. Uh, and, and right in the top six, we had three. Uh, would you move any other of these running backs up that, that got drafted behind Benson Lloyd Brooks? Man, I just want to say, like, whoever drafted Marshawn Lloyd in front of Jonathan Brooks, I personally want to fight because that <laughs> <laughs> pissed me off, dude. I, uh, I, no, I, I, um, so, so this is the second round is where I think the dynasty rookie draft in 2024 gets really, really interesting, right? I don't want to say the first round is chalk, right? The first maybe set six, seven picks. Seven, yeah, but, but yeah, right. It seems like the back end will probably be same thing. Pretty, pretty right. chalk with somebody going to two one. You could jumble it up anyway. So I, I feel you. Right. So uh, second round is uh, the furthest thing from chalk. It's like. Where are we going? Like, I like who's who's starting things off, and, and for Troy Benz, uh, Trey Trey Benson to be the two hundred one, the RB one in this class, he kind of feels like the RB one in this class now, doesn't he? Like prior to this, I had Jonathan Brooks, and man, Brooks, this is Brooks this isn't is, able to catch any hype here. So yeah, ben, uh, right, ben, right, yeah. So I actually switched. Um, maybe maybe the hype's getting to me a little bit too much. Um, I don't know, man. But I have Trey Benson now as my my RB one in this class. I have Jonathan Brooks still in the same tier, very close. But he is my RB two in this class. Maybe I'll switch back. I don't know. But um, Trey Benson two one, great pick. I love it, man. Feels like feels like value. Feels like the RB one in this class. Uh, Ad Mitchell at the two two. Probably, probably the right choice here, right? W- would you say so? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of fifty-fifty on Mitchell. I wasn't indifferent, I guess. I wasn't real gung ho one way. If he fell to me, I would take yep. him, but I wouldn't be reaching up to to grab him per se. And then obviously just had a really, really good showing at the combine. Really, really tested off the charts, um, and, and gives you that that bigger size, more prototypical guy. You get a lot of different flavors in this draft from the wide receiver position. Uh, and Mitchell gives you a little something different, but shows the vertical speed there that that you weren't sure how fast he was, and he's fast. Um, he's um, but I, I have him at the two hundred one in my rankings. Okay. So for him to go two two here, it felt right. It felt appropriate, and it felt like he probably got himself first round capital back. You know, as far as the NFL yeah. draft, right? I mean. I think the over under is right around six and a half wide receivers going in the NFL draft first yeah. round, and um, I think the record is seven. Just for context, just to give you an idea of like how loaded, how deep this wide receiver class is, right? Yeah. Um, We're gonna have some great ones going in the fourth and fifth round. Oh my god, I know, man. There's a lot of good guys going late day 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 three picks, right? Um, but. Get, getting back on track, Marshawn Lloyd at two hundred three. Holy cow, man! Maybe maybe I'm a uh, ignorant maybe i'm arrogant but holy cow man i thought just this not was, feeling lloyd or just really like brooks i i, I like marshawn lloyd uh i have him at the 212 though i just felt like this was so early um maybe man i i just i would this really surprised me when i was when we were drafting i was like holy cow i just i did not anticipate seeing his name this early and then uh jonathan and and look man like i like marshawn lloyd i'm not even ripping on him i just i just felt like this was early jonathan brooks at the 204 love it i love it i think uh i think this is a a hell of a value i have him at the at the 111 actually man i have benson and brooks 110 111 i i think people are gonna get I think it's going to be the cool thing to get back in on Jonathan Brooks just before the season starts. I think people, are, the fade has gone too far for him, right? The fade, the only reason he's getting faded just because he, he didn't perform at the combine, right? Obviously, because he had an ACL tear. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I agree for the most part. I think there could easily be a running back who gets up into that first round, like you're saying there, and, and top of the second, all the, all the top of the second, some backs. You would you like Mitchell though where he is and 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 then you would go Brooks for for sure after after Mitchell or Brooks you got Brooks over Mitchell is what you said. It, it, in my rankings, I have um, Jonathan Brooks at the one eleven. I have AD Mitchell at the two hundred one. Just to tell you where I'm gotcha. at. Uh, but the, right. but uh, yeah, we'll see, man. We got to see what the NFL draft cap. The NFL draft capital matters a lot to me more than it probably should. So uh, this process, we still got a long ways to go. Uh, two hundred five in our draft, we had Bo Nix. I'm okay with this. Um, I didn't mind this here. Uh, Keon Coleman, 206. Keon feels like, I kind of think this is where he's going to be for the most part. I think he's going to be like a mid-second round pick. I don't think, I don't think there's, I don't think he's going to be a first round pick in, in 
draft nearly draft. any any draft, in right? The actual I, draft I, or the no or no no draft? sorry dynasty rookie draft. I don't think we're going to see Keon Coleman going in the first. Yeah, I think it'd be very rare for that to happen. The first of of the NFL draft. Oh man, that's a that's a good question. Um, to tell you the truth, my personal opinion, he shouldn't be. Um, I think I think he's going to go very late first, early second in that range. Like Michael Pittman Jr., T. Higgins, early, mm-hmm. early second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, we're going to. That, that's that, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's kind of where we're going to see him go. Um, but I don't I, I don't think that he deserves to be a first round pick in the NFL draft. I don't think his college production. I, I don't think he was good enough of a prospect to be there. That's just my opinion. Um, and I I'm okay. Like I still like I still like Keon Coleman for what he is. I just I, I don't love him. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. at the 207. How do you feel about Penix going after Bo Nix? You would take Penix first, correct? I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm not, nobody is in this camp, but I'm, I'm sticking to it until we get the draft results. Um, I'm taking Penix over both of these guys. I'll, I'll, I'll Penix is the mm-hmm. QB4 for mm-hmm. me. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll, I would, I'll take Penix anywhere. If, if he goes anywhere near the first round, I'm, I'll take him in the back half of the first in rookie drafts. I, I love, Michael Penix I think he's awesome I thought he showed showed out really well there and then the big thing was all the all everything I read said the medicals were really really good oh yeah no, nothing oh, to yeah. be concerned about and you know huge hands gotta love that the hands is um <laughs> you know big as Anthony Richardson's hands um and he's a few inches shorter so cold weather let's go um and I you know he he lands in Seattle or something like that with his old boy Ben Grubb and and wheels up let's go uh, but I, yeah, I really like Penix. I thought he was the best quarterback out of the combine. Just everything looked very easy, very smooth, very natural for him. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I, I that's my personal um, opinion. We'll see if it gets validated at all. And we might not know for two more years. You know, that's that's the fun part about all this. So but I want to bounce back to those running backs real mm-hmm. quick. I think mm-hmm. Benson, Lloyd, Jonathan Brooks are the best chances for second round capital of all the as far as the NFL draft goes, right? So that'll help their case uh, to stay up in the front half of this uh, second round in rookie drafts and, and potentially float up into the first. And then you think you think Wright could get second round capital now after the testing, or you think that's more likely third round? I think that there's a real possibility that Jalen Wright's a second round pick in the NFL draft. I don't know if it's going to happen. I think there's a real chance, though, man. What did he run? A four three eight? I think I'm just reciting off the top of my head. He he had a good combine. Um, actually, I'm going to pull it up real quick, man, because I, I don't I don't want to mess up any of these numbers, man. J- Jalen Wright really benefited himself. Oh. He made himself a lot of money during during the combine. Uh, here, I got it right here, man. He's Jalen Wright scored a nine point seven five out of 10 on his RAS score. Uh, Just for context, he ranked 44th out of 1,745 running backs uh, from 1987 to 2024, 11-2 broad jump. That is the second longest ever recorded by a running back at the NFL Combine. And his first five yards of the 40-yard dash, I know you might say, okay, this is silly, but... No, no, I saw saw this stat. This is a good stat. This is what you want, really. Right, I just... just, This is the whole point of the pod, man. Like, I just want to give... Stats. I just want to provide value, provide information that people might not know. So the first five yards of the 40 yard dash, Jalen Wright, 15.16 miles per hour. Devon H. Hand, 14.94 miles per hour. Just showing you how quick he is right out of the gate, man. And his size came in great 510 210 i was pleasantly surprised right speed 438 40 time good college production elite athleticism so adjust your rankings fellas that's all i'm gonna say man i i uh casey getting back to your question could he be a second round pick based off everything i just read yeah he, he could be yeah uh w- will he be i don't know i kind of feel like i almost feel like his floor is the third round yeah um are, are you are you with me? I think yeah, he, no, I think I, he, I, he I has mostly, to be a day two pick at this point. I mostly agree with everything. The testing, you know, that, that's what it that's what it can do for you. You said it at one point. It can it can bounce you up and make you some money uh, if you if you have a good testing, particularly forty time. It doesn't necessarily equate to being actually good, but it can it can boost mm-hmm. your stock as far as at least your draft pick and a better draft pick could help you get some better opportunities a little faster. And I think Jalen Wright. Uh, did that for himself and I, I do believe he could get in the second and it felt like that was uh, I'll read these because we've already been in them a little bit and then I do want to bounce back a hair so 2-7 Penix 2-8 Wright uh, 2-9 Corum 2-10 Jadavian Sanders um, 2-11 uh, 
Bo Allen, and then 212, Mr. Austin here taking legit here at, at, at the 12 mark. So to, to bounce back to all that real quick, I think Wright was a really good value right there at 28. I can't necessarily who's, who I would say I would take in front of him at this point or or who I would take him in front of, but it just feels like a really good value after what he put down. Was kind of a sleeper, sleeper no more. Uh, me and JB did it a little episode about Wright and everything that, that popped up on that combine testing was exactly what pops up about him when you watch him on tape. So the, when those things combine and look the way they do, that's always a really good sign. Um, and then I saw somebody today on Twitter comp him with the RAS score and everything of, of Tevin Coleman. And then people were kind of bummed about that. That is not a reason to be bummed out. Tevin Coleman was fucking awesome for a couple mm-hmm. seasons there mm-hmm. um, and got, got banged up. And, uh, but if he's any, if he can come out of the gates, like sort of like a Tevin Coleman or, or better potentially, uh, that would that would be awesome because there was certainly some juice to being able to trade Tevin Coleman and or win with Tevin Coleman uh, at, at certain points. So uh, from a guy from nothing and a, and a bad running back class, all of a sudden we got four or five that were that we feel you know pretty good about. And then there's a couple of really good shots here we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. Keon Coleman, I know, you, you know, I, I think what he did didn't necessarily help him bounce bounce up like maybe Leggett had a good. Uh, combine and you know Tez Walker did too didn't really help him out in this draft this is one sample but Tez Walker I feel like was somebody people were high on and he was kind of trending down um, and maybe this combine could have taken him kind of back up didn't seem to here and we can talk about that in a minute but Keon Coleman didn't have a super excellent combine at least from the 40 perspective but then when you did all the drilling and all this all the miles per hour he was one of the fastest running the actual routes out there a lot of seconds and thirds and fourths on on the gps tracking of how fast he was running his routes um so i think te- ke- uh, keon coleman taking at two sixes is, is a really really fun stab in the second round like that could be he could be a absolute monster or he could be you know everyone wants to compare him to, to nikhil harry you know I, because they're, they have some similar contested catch red flags which is kind of where the analytical contested they got burned by harry and then they're like how do we get burned here how was these contested catches and son of a bitch we should have seen it coming um but i thought i thought there was better parts of coleman ran a 20.8 mile per hour speed in the gauntlet like that's yep. ridiculous yep. like absolutely ridiculous so just the four six isn't great but that he doesn't really show you that initial just down run run down the field speed potentially all the time but you know the fact that he can't separate, uh, I don't know. It just feels like he needs to be developed a little bit. And he, he could be really good in the right system, which is really what a lot of this comes down to. Where where do you go? Who gets to hone you and shape you and mold you? And who's throwing the ball to you? Um, and, and Keon Coleman at 2-6. It, certainly, I wasn't ever pulling the trigger from 1-8 to one twelve, but now we're in the middle of the second round. Like, sign me up for Keon Coleman. And I do think the capital will still be pretty good because I think there's going to be some intrigue, but I don't think it'll be first. Like, like they kind of felt like fantasy guys were a little more on where Keon Coleman should be in the draft than, than the NFL guys. And, and, you know, sometimes that works out in fantasy guys' favor. Sometimes fantasy guy looks like fantasy guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, NFL draft gets it wrong plenty. So, Right, uh, two eight, and then uh, Corum at two nine. What's your thoughts on on Corum? You like him? Because I I I came away saying he didn't have to. He didn't make me take him off the board, and I like Corum probably as you know more than than some people. I think just a really really good back. Jim Harbaugh gets a hold of Corum, wheels up, right? I mean, and he could he could he could mm-hmm. give him the second round capital um, if you know. So it's it's interesting, right? That would be crazy. I know people have been talking about that for, it feels like weeks now, but oh my God, Blake Corum, you know, taking over that Austin Eckler role in Los Angeles paired with, with Harbaugh and Herbert. Dude, talk about just a complete 180 to his dynasty value. He would shoot up rankings. Um, I have him at the 210, so he went 2-9 here. I think this is about right. I'm cool with him going here. I, I I like the pick, man. I mean, what did he have? 27 touchdowns this season, rushing touchdowns. The second closest in college football, 21. Just absurd, right? Like video game type of numbers from Blake Corum this year. And like, yeah, he wasn't the most efficient, dude. Who the hell cares? When you have 27 touchdowns, you got 27 touchdowns. Like Blake Cor- Hats off to Blake Corum, man. He had a hell of a season, and uh, I'm just happy for him, happy for Michigan. Um, 
I think I think the value here is appropriate though, Casey. And I going back to what you said before about Keon Coleman, I think you nailed it. When you're talking about the gauntlet, you took the words right out of my mouth. He had like twenty and a half miles an hour speed during the gauntlet, man. It's the forty does not matter that much at all to me. It's the in-game speed, right? The actual game speed. And and that's what you see. I think that's a more accurate representation during the gauntlet. And for Keon to do that, holy cow, man. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm with you, man. At the 206, like he's... I have Keon at 2-2 in my ranking. So 2-6 so here. Um, I didn't even realize I was that bullish on Keon, but his it's it's you taking that stab. These are dart throws at this point, man. As we get to the mid to late second, it kind of feels like a lot of dart throws that we're taking, right? We're not nearly as sure about these prospects. That's why we're taking them later. And uh, Ke- Keon, you know, he's far from polished, but he can get there, man. He's only 20 years old. I like his upside. So uh, I, I like that pick at the 2-6. Uh, is there anything else that stuck out to you here? Not really. I just Corum is is interesting to me because he seems polarizing, and I I, I kind of like him. Gets in the right system with the right people. Um, it just he he wasn't slow as as some people were making him out to be. I think. And when when you did, and I said so a lot of this stuff. If you listen to the um, combine reaction, I said some of this. But when they we put up the drills next to each other and they ran the side by side with Corum and, mm-hmm. and Lloyd. Lloyd's drills were way faster, but Corum on the field running those drills was just two, three steps ahead of them um, Mm -hmm. when they're simulcast. So that's, you know, things that you that that some of those drills maybe aren't necessarily or some of the testing isn't accounting for. But when you watch the drills, you can kind of see that just sort of like with the Keon Coleman, like we were just talking about. Uh, I stick with Jatavion Sanders as my uh, tight end, too. He didn't test outstanding. But then when you saw him on the field drills, Smooth as butter out there doing what he does. Uh, he's they're certainly not going to get in there and block a ton. He's he's the new age tight end. He needs to get somewhere that's going to going to fit to what he can do and use him as sort of that receiver. Uh, but I, I I stuck with Sa- Sanders there. And then the other running back that that went here, uh, Braylon Allen, also very polarizing. Um, to some is is the RB one or at least was the RB one at some point. And we got him here at 211. Let's just get our thoughts on on these last two guys, Allen and uh, Legette here at 12. Right. Uh, Braylon Allen fell. I don't even know if he fell, but uh, he is my RB3 in my rankings. I have him at the 26. So for him to go to the 211, uh, man, I, I thought this was a great value. I was sitting there at the 212. I was like praying to God. I was like, dude, if, if Braylon falls to me at the 212, like I never, never anticipated that. Uh, he's starting to feel a fade. I, f- I feel like the fade has gone too far for Braylon Allen at this point, man. Yeah, like like it. He, he his college production. I mean, dude, I, I've, I've said this so many times on the pod, like balling out at 17 years old, crushing Ohio State at uh, a, a true 18-year-old sophomore. Uh, I mean, dude's going to play his whole rookie campaign as a 20-year-old. Uh, I mean, his college production is absurd, like 3,400, 3,500 co- career collegiate rushing yards, 35 rushing touchdowns. Dude, uh, I threw up a picture on him the other day on, on Twitter. He, at 17, he just looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger times 10. <laughs> like, he, he's just... He's someone again. Like I feel like you have to take a stab at him. If he falls to the two eleven, man, you have to be overjoyed. You have to take the chance on Braylon Allen here at the two eleven. Um, and and I want to say something real quick about the running back class. I think they got way too much hate, man. I mm. think people are starting to get back yeah. in on this running back class a little bit more, right? I think they're starting to say, hey, we got three, maybe four competent running backs. Like, maybe it's Braylon Allen. Maybe it's Jalen Wright. Maybe it's Jonathan Brooks, uh, Trey Benson. Maybe even Marshawn Lloyd, right? Blake Corum. Like, these are all the names that mm. that I, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm cool with throwing them on my roster, man. I'm, I'm cool with taking a shot at these guys, right? I think that uh, they all got a clear path to succeed as long as they get the draft capital. And, and you know, the landing spot... Um, and then there were a few other guys that, you know, we had Audric Estime, we had uh, Bucky Irving. It seemed like, you know, stock yeah. down, but um, there, there's still time, man. There's still time. Oh, we got sure. the NFL draft. We got the most important thing. But Casey, to touch on the last player, who did you have? Was it Xavier Leggett, yeah. right? Right, Xavier Leggett. Um, I didn't necessarily, my opinion didn't really change a whole lot on him. He was actually one of the few guys that I felt like uh, I really didn't, you know, just I, I'm, I think he's kind of placed appropriately. What about you? Yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole bunch of guys that I could see taking him over at this point. Uh, but 
I do really like him. Uh, I think f- for me, the the point is, I mean, and we'll I'll we'll hammer this home a little further as we get into the next six picks. But um, you know, I'm at I'm more at two twelve, and I I think I could go all the way to three six three eight and be, you know, feel like I have a pretty good guy to take here and, and, mm-hmm. and, and some good dice to roll um, and I'm sure they'll some of those guys will swap out for other guys as this process keeps going because I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I've watched every bit of tape and know every little thing about these guys it's still a process we just got one more little piece of the puzzle here but uh, I think Legette really had a had a nice combine show and he is built he looks insane in, in the underwear Olympics um, yep. I thought he was good on the drills he came out and ran fast people aren't going to like the fifth year senior and kind of breakout stuff that's fine that's what's keeping him down here uh but the build and and the th- type of things that he can do he's he's a game breaker man well he, he is his his games where he where he goes nuts are insane and some of the like he's he makes some of the craziest plays out of out of all these guys out here uh just doesn't have the the production profile that you necessarily want to see um and you know i think there's probably a couple of various reasons for that and and i'm sure We'll we'll get into a deeper uh, legit conversation at some point, but we don't need to jump into that right at, at this particular second. So um, let's let's jump over down to the third round. And I guess uh, before we do that, um, we give Austin a little shout out here. We hit the rankings, hit you with a where, where can we get all the, the rankings at Austin? At Austin Abbott FF on Twitter. I post most of my content pretty much every single day uh usually putting out a few big threads every day on twitter so uh i just updated my dynasty 2024 rookie rankings and uh yeah man just uh reach out love talking ball let's go uh love the rookie class rookies uh you should be happy if you have a 2024 first i'll leave it at that i, I, I think you i think i think all your picks just got a, a boost man because like right, we're, right. we're getting sure the first is great yeah. uh, but i think a lot of like up into the mid third right now i'm pretty pretty stoked about picks um, yeah, you're not wrong. We're going to hit a little running back talk uh, in, the, in the next couple of days. So that'll be out soon. Make sure you check that out of, of rookie running backs. Um, and we're also going to be going live Tuesday with a, a startup mock to get back into the flow of that and see where maybe some of these rookies have jumped up the ADP for for startup mocks. So that's another important phase of this kind of whole thing. Uh, so then we're going to get into the third round. Roman Wilson, 3-1. Spencer Rattler 3-2, Malachi Corley 3-3, Isaac Garedo, I believe is how you say that, 3-4, Bucky Irving 3-5, and Tez Walker at 3-6. Now, before we go any further, actually, if if you guys want to go and vote for your boys at the Charleston City Paper, we have been nominated for the Best Local Podcast, Uh, so Jay will put a link in the description there, but go fill that out and, and help your boys uh, go win a cool little trophy we could put back on this mantle and and furthermore it's they got one of the better like parties in charleston so your boy would love to go party uh for the pod and for you guys so that would be greatly appreciated um all right so one through or three three one through three six here what's your biggest takeaways what do you like what do you not like I like Roman Wilson right um he was one of the more difficult players for me to evaluate just simply because of lack of volume right that goes for all the offensive weapons excluding the running backs at Michigan Uh, I did like a lot there's a lot to like about Roman Wilson Um, and he's again now now we're at the 301 so I'm okay with this Um, Malachi Corley I'm just I'm not gonna say a whole lot about Spencer Rattler Um, I didn't love this pick but I, I get it right this is we're doing a super flex draft of course quarterbacks matter more than anything they put up the most points, so I understand it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where Spencer Rattler goes in the actual NFL draft, right? Yeah. This is a player who was talked about a few years ago that legitimately could have been like the QB top one. quarterback. Yes, right? Could have been. Could What could have been and just never ended up getting there. Uh, the 3-3 Malachi Corley, the Yak King, the self-proclaimed Yak King, right? A lot to like about Malachi. Sure. Uh, love him. Very, t- very talented. Love that. I-, I love his size, right? I know, obviously, gets comp to Debo Samuel. No, he's not going to end up being Debo Samuel. But yes, he can still succeed at the next level. Sure. I don't. I don't even necessarily know if his upside, the best version, like a ten out of ten, everything falls the right way. I don't even think necessarily that Malachi gets to Debo current level, right? I just being completely blunt, completely 
honest with y'all. Sure. Um, and, and I like Malachi, right? I don't want to come off as I don't like him. Um, but to take him at 303, I was cool with it. Didn't mind it. The biggest riser in this entire process, I felt like from the combine, just in terms of ROI, had to be Isaac Garendo. He had to be. Mm. Uh, he just, man, it felt yeah. like he almost He's came out of up, nowhere, probably right? a little higher even than this, so... Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he, uh, mostly out of nowhere. Like I hadn't certainly hadn't watched tape on him. I I've seen some tape on all almost all the other running all the other running backs drafted here except for him. I had to go watch a little bit before we talked about him last night and didn't want, I still haven't watched enough to to get a good grasp on him. But a big fella and tested outrageously. Yep. Uh, so yeah, certainly he, just getting on the map here is insane. He clearly has elite athleticism i mean he he just he looked phenomenal at the nfl combine i hats off to him man good for him he goes here at the three four and then three five someone who i really really like a lot and i'm trying to not get uh too bent out of shape over over you know the poor combine showing from bucky irving it's okay man i'm, I'm not gonna i'm not gonna lose my mind over it i'm not gonna lose sleep over it i'm still in on bucky irving and, and i'll tell you what he just feels like more of a value than ever now right and sure. uh it's it's nice for someone like me who believes in Bucky, uh, someone who believes in Bucky Irving, right? I, the fact that I can now get him later makes me happy. And uh, I'm not going to get too discouraged about his 40 time. I'm not going to get too discouraged about uh, his stock being down. It's OK, man. I saw I like the tape. He thrived at Oregon. He increased annually in basically every statistic possible. Bucky Irving was a dog for Oregon. So um, I, I like the pick here at three, five, three, six. Tez Walker, man. I don't want to let me let me word this correctly. I feel like Tez Walker is one of the wide receivers that is just kind of forgotten or he's just He's not being talked about nearly as much. And I think it's just because this wide receiver class is so deep. But Tez Walker dominated at UNC. He was problematic with Drake May this season. Mm -hmm. So to get him here here at the 3-6, it's okay. Like, I didn't mind it, man. I thought the third I thought the third round was pretty sharp for the most Dude, part. Was, How did you feel? The guy when we first started doing these in, in December that like was up near the first round. And he's all the way down here at yeah. 3-6. I think it's I think that's great value. I thought he, he helped himself out. Uh, he's been kind of pegged as a little bit more of a of a one trick pony kind of guy. Only only does a few things, but the couple things he does is he does them really well. And then so now he put down some athleticism on the testing there, um, and now you get him in the right system and can can teach him. Uh, he certainly could be a huge huge value at three six. So I think that's great. I think he he could end up you know trickle trickling up this board into the second potentially, but. We're we're at a log jam here. Somebody's got to be in this three one to three four range here, and it's starting to feel like where we were last year with being able to get Downs and and uh, Dell and Puka and you know just a, a a good chunk of guys here. Now, really, there wasn't a, a quarterback that would have, um, you know, crushed in that spot. But Rattler potentially could be that guy um, if. If he gets a third, fourth round draft capital, then I think he'll be going in this slot all day long um, because there is there's a lot of good stuff there. He just kind of had to figure it out. And everything I've read about him is, is positive. And he certainly has all the tools crushed it at the senior bowl. People down there really liked him. So that's 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 all positive stuff. So I, I but and I think he will probably go in the third or fourth round. Most likely seems to be getting buzz at the right time. Mm -hmm. Always good to be. Um, rising up so I, I agree with you I like Roman Wilson at 3-1 um, I don't think he came out and necessarily made everybody buzz about him but he came out there and did really 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 well for him he ran you know people were talking about him being in the four twos and he ran a, a pretty fast 40 and, and really isn't getting that much love for it uh, so yeah I like I like the shot on Rome there he, he probably is going to get pretty good draft capital I saw a, a mock the other day with him in the back of the first um so right right you know th that this is if, if that happens then i don't know if he's anywhere near there i don't think how could you take him in the third you know what i mean uh so probably good value love corley uh we talked about isaac uh garendo there bucky irving i, I think exactly what you said is kind of how i feel like he's good va better value now what he put on tape is what he put on tape if you believe in that i i, I personally do it's great he's a good pass catcher i didn't necessarily think he was going to go somewhere and and get a crazy three down roll. He was gonna go have to work him work his way into uh kind of being the satellite and, and the and and the uh pass catcher sort of role. 
third down guy and then see if he can eat into some of that other stuff. You just thought he was going to test a little better, but the stuff on the field, the tape on the field and, and the play on the field is, is still that. So I'm still interested in Bucky Irving. We're just getting him, you know, a little later. That's what we got to do. We can't get headstrong and keep drafting him in the middle of the second. We got to let him fall. And if you, if you still like him, maybe swap a pick or two at some point and, and grab yourself some Bucky. That's what I did mm-hmm. with Kyron Williams two years ago. And it looked like a terrible move for a year. And then, you know, I just swapped a bunch of threes and fours. And every time he was around late three, early four, I, I, I went and scooped him, you know, figuring out a way to get a deal done. And it had worked, no, it worked no pretty work well. It did work out well, you know, this time. <laughs> and then there's plenty of, you know, things that didn't work out uh, quite as well doing that. But, you know, that was that was a good one. But you had to you also had to hang on to him for an extra year. Um, so, you know, it's OK. The sky necessarily isn't falling on on your Bucky hopes. It just um, he didn't necessarily help the class overall of saying pushing everybody. You had enough other people push the picks up that the Bucky drop didn't really hurt the pick values at all. Uh, so then we talked about Tez a little bit. So let's hit the back half of this. We got Ricky Persall, Jalen McMillan, uh, Ray Davis, Ben Sinat, Brendan Rice, and Audric Estimate to round it out. Now, Estimate was probably going uh, 212 a lot of times before this, uh, but not so much anymore. Persall, love him. He came out and crushed it, m- much like Lad, he kind of technician like, can do a lot of different things for you from the wide receiver position. Tested extremely well. Love Persall. He's going to be on every one of my teams if he's anywhere around 3-6, 3-7 here. Same with Jalen McMillan. I think Jalen McMillan is probably in the second round for me. Um, I would I would figure yeah. out how to get him. I love Jalen McMillan. Um, You're just a Washington fan, so just, yeah, well, you just got to admit I did, it. I, well, to be <laughs> fair, I have that is the most college football that I've watched. The team that I've watched the most over the last two years is Washington. I don't I don't have a college football team. I don't but they were a lot of fun last year and this whole year I was for a while that that was Oregon years ago. I was betting on Oregon every single week cuz they were a great team. They were fun to watch and they're on at 10 o'clock so you know, you can put the kids to bed and watch them. Um you know, not not distracted. So I, I did a lot of that with Washington, but going back and watching the McMillan tape, like I'm not terribly high, I'm not as high like some people have Polk kind of where I feel about McMillan. I don't feel that way necessarily. I do really like McMillan. They just happen to have three awesome fucking guys. Rome's yeah. sick. McMillan was awesome two years ago before Rome was really even Rome, and then he got a little banged up this year. And Polk has uh, come around and, and been really, really solid for them. So, uh, yeah, I, I can say I watched a lot of Huskies football this year. Wouldn't say I'm a fan. I was rooting for them a good bit, though, uh, especially at the end of this year. Uh, so really like McMillan, Ray Davis, uh, you know, haven't dug super deep on the on the tape on Ray yet. Just scratching the surface on some of the deeper running backs, but don't hate him. Sanat for me, probably the the tight end three in the class. Theo Johnson doesn't get drafted, uh, who just had a big stock bump up. Sanat, Sanoit, I'm not 100 percent sure how to pronounce it, uh, but, you know, Theo Johnson and him bolstered up the the tight end class in premium so now you where we only had maybe and maybe some other people like one or two of the other guys who a lot of good decent athletic testing and some good RAS scores from a lot of these tight ends so I think at least two more tight ends got entered into the fold through at least three rounds I mean Theo Johnson gets second round capital and in, in premium he's probably gonna end up going in a lot of these second round of rookie drafts right or you know if, if Ben gets pretty good capital he's probably gonna end up going in second round of tight end premium rookie mocks like I could really really see that happen it'll be a run on tight ends you know Sanders I, I still have Sanders up there maybe people drop Sanders a little uh, but I think all of a sudden we went from two to possibly four um, of being kind of relevant. So I think those guys help boost the class. Brandon Rice got a dig in the tape on, um, but, you know, didn't certainly as far as score wise overall for how big he is, uh, tested pretty well and estimate kind of like the Bucky um, Irving talk, but actually his RAS score really wasn't bad outside of that four, seven forty estimate was like an 8.71 or something like that on the RAS. So in the green there uh, just didn't test well, as as uh running in a straight line which is, is yep. certainly if you watch him that's certainly not his game um so your thoughts on the back half of this draft 
Yeah, the first guy I want to talk about is Jalen McMillan, man. He uh, he feels like the best value, in my opinion, here from the 3.7 to the 3.12. I just, Casey, I, I 100% with you, man. Uh, he Jalen, just a reminder, Jalen McMillan's, McMillan's four healthy regular season games to start 2023, 95 yards, mm-hmm. 120 yards, 96 yards, 131 yards. Yeah. He, he was on a mission, man. Like, he was going to have a historic season. And a reminder, the season before in 2022, Slaughter. Jalen, yes, Jalen McMillian, McMillan, almost 1,100. He's about 1100, to be Jalen McMillian. He's about to have Yeah, yeah he's about to be, man. <laughs> almost 1,100 yards, 79 catches, 9 touchdowns. And that is with Rome Adunze, obviously, being and right Polk. next to him. Yeah, Yes, correct. And Polk. Um, just, the, you know, both of those wide receivers, I'm talking about McMillan and Roma Dunze, they eclipsed 1,000 yards in 2022. It was going to happen again in 2023. Unfortunately, he got banged up, man. His size, very close to Stephon Diggs. I, I really think this is a phenomenal value here. What did he go? 306, 37, 37, yeah, was it? Or 38, yeah. Oh, my God. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Just love that pick. Um I want to touch on Audric Estime next, man. Audric yeah. Estime, three twelve. Holy cow, man! Maybe uh, uh, this did this. This felt very far off to me. I th- I think he should be like an early third. I thought he should be a really early third. Um, I mean, I'm just bullish on him because I like so much about Audric Estime, man. I thought his collegiate production was was everything that you wanted to see and more. Um, I, I Casey, you nailed it when you were talking about Audric Estime at the combine. You said that he did everything well, except for running a straight line, right? That that's what you mentioned, yeah. and I and, and I mean, think you're spot on, right? And it's it's so funny how that that forty time can deter people and and just you know get them all bent out of shape. It's like, did you really forget that he had eighteen touchdowns this year, third in college football? Did you forget that he had thirteen hundred and forty one rushing yards, which was twelfth in college football? Um, the, dude, I just I, I I don't I don't I don't understand how he goes at three twelve here, man. He uh, thirty touchdowns, twenty five hundred rushing yards in his last twenty five games in college, and, and you're gonna let that thirty the, the forty time bother you that much? Twenty years old. Uh, I, ju- I just I love his size. I I love so much about Audric Estime. So uh, I'm gonna stop yapping about him. But man, for him to go here at the three twelve, I, I I thought it was great value. I I, I really did. Um, the rest of this uh, end of the third round, everything was sound. I thought everything was pretty accurate, man. Brendan Rice, obviously son of Jerry Rice, uh, you know, he paired with Kayla Williams this year at USC. I thought this was an appropriate value for him. He's interesting to me, man. I don't, I don't know how much if he becomes significantly more polished, a significantly better wide receiver at the NFL level. Brendan Rice, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, It'll be interesting to see what happens moving forward. I'm curious to see what his draft capital is. I feel like it has to be day three. I think, I think he's got to be like a fourth round pick at the earliest, right? I don't, I don't think teams are going to reach on him. Um, yeah, I haven't. I, I'm not I, terribly I, down the rabbit hole on him, but yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I would tend to agree. Um, this is where it's so funny, man, because now we're like late third, and this is where I think the draft starts to get ugly, right? I mean, most drafts are getting ugly, like sometime in the second round and here we are towards the end of the third and i'm like okay like now this is where it's like less obviously less appealing right you got pierce all you got mcmillan you got you got some still still you know pieces that i'm definitely interested in but uh i i don't love ray davis ben Sinat, um I, I i don't necessarily love him either um but you know, all in all, like this was a this was the first mock draft I've done, of course, since the combine, right? That just concluded, um, and and I thought, all things considered, man, um, the draft just kind of uh, initially I thought it was very accurate, and then it kind of got a little uh, second round, third round, got a little crazy. Um, well, that's it'll how it's be interesting, go, man. That's how it's going to yeah. go. And you're you know, a lot of guys can can fake their way through drafts in the first round, uh, at least for as far as most of your regular leagues i'm not talking about any of these guys per se because we don't we're still figuring things out but like once we get to actual rookie drafts and you know you're the you're the there's two or three guys in your league who take it pretty seriously and do all their research or or maybe do podcasts or whatever so they're around all the time but the consensus of the of the first round is usually pretty easy to put together but you can usually tell in the draft it starts to fall apart and things start to get super wonky 
once the chalk kind of runs out and that's where we're at here and this is what we got to kind of decipher to figure out to give you the best edge and we're going to be massaging this to get it to the right place um, and hopefully get get the best edge you possibly can but I, I think you're you know kind of basically saying exactly that right now I don't know right right the uh no man it just the second round hit me like I, I was like wow this really is all over the place this is the first mock I've done since the combine and uh it's only gonna get I would say um not necessarily more chalk but I think the second round is gonna get a little bit more uh you know consensus is gonna slowly agree over time picks are gonna start to uh you know we're gonna see more like definitive tiers is what yeah. I'm getting at so yeah. right now it's kind of all over the place and I think it makes it a lot of fun man like this was this was a fun exercise I think the people are actually gonna really enjoy this and uh, we're gonna see man as this process continues as we get closer to the NFL draft yeah I mean we, we've got a little under t what Two about a month months. and a half yeah 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 so a lot, it's lot exciting to, a lot stuff to go man through, a lot more information to get and then the draft capital and stuff will sort some of that out and that'll probably get you ironed out to some degree of maybe like two eight ish where you know there'll be at mm -hmm. least a, a chalk and maybe that won't be it'd be kind of like the back half of the first round where it's not in order but it's kind of the, the same guys go in there and then you know last year it felt like two six to two uh to three four really was off the rails uh you could kind of get what you could get tillman going all the way up in the second round you could get <laughs> yeah. tillman going three eight you know so yeah. or you know tank going all the way up in the second round tank going all the way at you know three eight or whatever so um yeah i i uh I, I mostly agree there how about a couple of guys that didn't go we we mentioned theo johnson didn't go um so obviously a ridiculous RAS score there with him uber athletic you know didn't have a ton of production on the field, but not the end all be all for uh, tight ends. Uh, Dylan Lobb came out and just tested fine, like across the board, mm -hmm. didn't blow it up. So he was in everybody's mouth. So probably still a good value. Didn't get drafted here. Good pass catching running back. Uh, I, I like him out of New Hampshire. He's he's pretty solid. Uh, anybody else that really jumps off to you? I had uh, where, where are we at cowing didn't get drafted. Malik Washington didn't get drafted like both of those guys a lot. Yeah. I love Malik Washington. Yeah. How about Isaiah Davis? I didn't, I, I'm not terribly familiar with him, but I know a lot of people liked him. There was some tight ends here that, that could go either way. Any other players for you that you want to mention? Uh, I, I guess Jalen Polk, we like briefly touched on him, but he's right there in that conversation, man. Yeah. Um, and Malik Washington feels like the big, the biggest snub to me here. Um, He's, uh, oh my God, man, Malik Washington, go look him up, man. Go do some due diligence. Go love do some him. research. Yeah. You're, you're going to fall in love with Malik Washington. Maybe he got overly faded just because he, he you know, his size. It's, dude, and I'm yeah, the, well, the he's, king he's, size this, Casey. You know yeah, that. Yeah, I don't yeah. even care, man. I don't even care. He's awesome. I, lo the field. I, I love Malik Washington. He's kind of like uh, legit there where, you know, was that uh, a different program? I know. Uh, I'm drawing a blank for where Washington was uh, Northwestern and then transferred to Virginia and had this big right. breakout. So, you know, that's people aren't going to be super into that. Uh, and then on top of that, he's a smaller guy, but he, he tested well. Like I said, a lot of these guys tested well enough to not knock them off of being like, oh, yeah, you can't really fuck with that guy or he's he's probably going to be a seventh round pick. All these guys have a real like fourth, fifth round, the NFL draft. There's going to be a lot of good wide receivers still out there. You mentioned Polk. Burton nobody even talks about him Johnny Wilson we don't know what his fate is but the testing numbers are awesome for him uh and potentially could be shift over to the tight end Michael Pratt a quarterback people like Jamari Thrash a personal favorite of mine uh, yeah. I think he could be a third round pick Cowing's really solid Aeneas Smith we didn't get to see him because he had a, a hairline fracture I believe so a lot of a uh, lot of good stuff in there there's Jace um I'm drawing Jace uh from Alabama What's his last Jace name? Jace McClellan, Jace the running McClellan. back. Yep, Frank Gore Jr. Yep. Um, and uh, who, there was one more running back I wanted to mention. I'm just out of jo out of Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, you your boy Milton. Yep, yep, that's right, man. He, uh, you know, I feel like he got no love. <laughs> I feel like I feel like he's just kind of forgotten at this point. Um, but uh, I, Casey, let me. I, I want to rant about Malik Washington real quick, and then we'll. Get the FF out of here. Is yeah. that cool with you? Sure. Okay. Malik Washington. I, and this is just a personal 
thought of mine, man. If he went like the third round to the New York Jets, I think that would be such a phenomenal fit, right? Behind Garrett Wilson, paired with Aaron Rodgers, I would love to see the Jets get a real wide receiver too. Uh, I think he could thrive in a lot of different systems, a lot of different teams. I would just love to see Malik Washington. I think he would be a perfect fit there with the Jets. Uh, but I want to talk about him really quick, man. First in... Okay, okay. Let, let me let me go on a quick rant about Malik Washington. He was uh, first in receptions in college football with 110. First in receptions per game. Fourth in receiving yards in college football, 1,426. Second in receiving yards per game. Um, five foot nine, 192 pounds. Uh, crushed in contested catch rate, uh, 65% despite his height, right? So he still balled out. Yeah. He had 35 missed tackles forced, which was first in college football. 3.15 yards per route run versus man. 3.38 yards per route run versus zone. 90th percentile in separation dominated one-on-ones at the shrine bowl uh i i just malik washington's the truth man like this kid wasn't even drafted today that that is a true you know accurate representation of how deep this wide receiver class is i know we always talk about how deep this class is but like holy cow man for malik washington to, to put up numbers like that and to not even get drafted, it just shows you how good this 2024 class is. That's that's all I want to say, man. Shout out to Malik Washington. He's a dog. He he crushed it. Um, I love watching him. The tape's a lot of fun. Um, Luke McCaffrey, another one, came out there and was yes. pretty good. Yep. And good jeans, good Levi's there. Um, <laughs> Javon Baker didn't even get drafted here. I don't know if he was just too far down the list and nobody saw him. Uh, but that was that was probably a screw up by me because I, I had three ten there. I should have grabbed them. I would have grabbed them at two ten. To be quite honest with you, I thought he was gone already. So I think I think Javon, Javon Baker's got to get drafted here. We I think that's a I think it's a major screw up there. What do you think? Snoog's not going to be happy. I know Snoog wasn't in this draft because he would have taken him at the one one over yeah. Marvin Harrison. <laughs> He's his biggest fan. But no, dude, I'm I'm with you. I think that uh, he 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 should have been drafted. Um, I would have taken him over, you know, guys like Ray Davis or uh, honestly, I would have taken Javon Baker over Ricky Pierce. All personally, I, I I'm sure you're probably nah, with I'm, me I'm, on that. I'm I'm, a, I'm right? okay with that. I'm okay with that. I do really like Persall. I mean, I, I you mm-hmm. could you could move Baker all the way to, um, you know. Two eight, two nine, mm-hmm. three one, three two, three four. Um, so I think that's, I think that's a screw up on on our part here. To not mention him earlier, uh, but he was really, really. I was just scrolling all the way down the list of players, um, and he was he's all the way at the bottom. So um, probably missed him there. I, I missed him, and and everybody else in the draft missed him. So a um, little bit of a of a whoopsie daisy there, um, but. Kamani Vidal was a Troy running back that we got to check out yep. really, really strong. Um, but he, he could potentially jump up in this, in this mix here and add another name. And then, uh, the guy from Purdue, I mentioned him yesterday on the show. Um, Tyrone Tracy jr. I had a really good rat right. score. came out was a wide mm-hmm. receiver, just moved over to running back. Uh, so definitely got to go check him out, uh, for the film. So those guys are on the film watch list here for me. Uh, but yeah, so a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see where Baker goes. Um, I feel like that was a bummer there. But anyway, anything else to add before we get out of here? No, man. This is uh, this was fun. This was this was a lot of fun, man. This is something that's going to fluctuate drastically, right, over the next month or two. Really, uh, not even just the month or two. You know, just the whole off season, uh, the summer. Uh, we're going to see the second, and I think the first round is going to be pretty close to chalk. Uh, the second and third round, man, we're going to see a lot of changes. So uh, this is this is uh, I'm just looking forward to it, man. I love the process. I love the off season, and I love the NFL draft. Again, it is my favorite weekend of the year. It's not a debate. It is the best week of the year. So um, I I just I can't wait, man. It's like it's like Christmas on steroids to me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a lot of fun. The off season is certainly in the dynasty community a whole lot of fun. So, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five dollar high on the Patreon. Go follow Austin at Austin Abbott. That's two B's and two T's and two F's uh, for all social media platforms. And we'll be back this week. Actually, you might actually not see that till next week with some running backs. We're gonna get all up in the running backs a little more. Maybe rank them, rate them, uh, see how good they do underwater. I don't know. We'll we'll do a lot of uh, different things, and then we're gonna we'll be live. 
either tomorrow or the next day. We're gonna, I don't know when this is going to come out, but we'll be live Tuesday uh, doing a startup mock. So subscribe so you don't miss that. Uh, Austin, good to see you, and we will catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.